Hello and welcome to the... Wait, is that what I say? (laughs) Yeah. Hello and welcome to the Nostalgia Podcast. A podcast where we discuss the retelling or continuation of pop culture favorites as seen through a queer and feminist lens. My name is Eric Lefebvre. And I am Jessica Tercero. And this week we watched... Independence Day and Independence Day Day Resurgence. Just in Uh, time for the observance of Independence Day, right? Which, to be fair, I will not be celebrating. And by by that, I will be looking for space alien content, which is perfect for this. Because truly, (laughs) Independence Day, I know that it, like, takes place during the 4th of July, and it's supposed to be, like, yay, America, but it literally has nothing to do with America. It's just alien fights, which love, obsessed with. I mean, it kind of does have to do with America because yeah. America the is mil- making decisions that ref- for the world. Like, yeah, that yeah. for the world, <laughs> and it's very pro America because America mm-hmm. saves the day and stuff like that. It's just That's true. only told through an American lens, so we yeah. don't really see that until the infamous Bill Paxton. You know, today is our Independence Day. Yeah. Wait, is that Bill Paxton? Oh, no. Bill Pullman. I'm sorry. Bill Pullman. Pullman. Oh, okay. I was like, wait. (laughs) I did see that his name was Bill something. Yeah, wait, because Paxton was the game over guy. Yeah. 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 The brain is a wonderful place. Um, Truly magical. Truly magic. Uh, And like that, uh, segue into telepathy, these movies... (laughs) I was going to say, do you, I, sometimes when we're talking about things, I feel like you and I are like right on that same page. Like I'm watching this and I'm like, oh, I know. I know already what Eric is thinking watching this. Yeah. So in a way, we kind of also have telepathy, but it's oh, like, yeah. I mean, it's just because we've been podcasting together for oh, what, yeah. like almost 50 episodes now. I can't this. even believe that's wild. Have you seen these movies before? I had. I had okay. seen Both? uh yeah, like and oh. also Independence Day was like always on TV. Like it was one of those like it's either the same episode of I Love Lucy or this movie always playing. So I've seen it like a lot growing up just because of that. <sighs> then we watched the new one because it came out my husband and I share a birthday. He's uh, June 24th, I'm June 25th. So our birthday is always kind of combined. So when the second one came out, Resurgence, that's what it's called? I don't know. I just call it Independence Day 2. Resurgence, yes. We decided that we wanted to get very drunk at a bar and go watch this with some of our friends because it is going to be very bad. It came out on our birthday. So we're like, cool, let's do this. And it was like, that movie is not even good drunk. Like, it's not even, like, a fun drunk, like, <laughs> you know, like, you can't just turn off your brain and watch it because it just hurts so bad. Yeah. And what's what's wild, too, is, like, I usually don't do this, but I did time it. And, um, wait, hold on, let me check my phone. Yeah, it was five hours too long, for sure. Like, it was <laughs> significantly longer than it should have been. I really do feel like there were seven acts for no fucking reason, uh, that weren't just... resolved either. Like there, it was yeah. like the introduction of seven acts, but there was no rising or falling or no, apex it... to any of these. It was just here's a couple plot points. And also for a sequel slash remake, like this was, it's essentially the exact same plot. So it's not like they're telling anything new or changing anything. For the most part, it's just like it's his son. There's a couple new characters, but now it's in space because we're future. Anyways, the ship's Nepotism. bigger. Oh, no. The alien's bigger. Oh, no. Let's do the same thing we did in the first one. Whoop. Okay, great. Movie's over. That's all we needed. Thank you. Like... It's nepotism, the <laughs> alien movie. <laughs> yeah, truly. Yeah. Um, oh, what a... I think what that's a... also something that held it back like quite a bit, Yeah. which we will we will get into yeah, but but yeah, I was just I was excited because I was like, oh cool, Jeff Goldblum's in this, and yes. like you know, and they had like some of the original stuff. Oh cool, this will be great, and it was not. Um, yeah. Have you seen these movies before? I saw Independence Day when I was a kid. I don't remember a lot of it. Just like taking out of context, I love the alien aspect, but that was kind of like all I understood. But I also realized that like my brain likes to mesh things together when like they just have one commonality with them and so that commonality was will smith and for some reason 
I have a connection with Wild Wild West and this movie. Oh, I thought you were going to say Men in Black. No, well, because Men in Black to me is like its own standalone okay. thing. But Wild Wild West was so like bizarre as just a movie, especially seeing it as like a like an eight, nine year old and being like, this is amazing. I love this. Seeing it then. Cinema. But yeah. But then contextualizing Will Smith as that common point and then being like, I think these are the same thing. Even knowing full well they're not. Like, I know that they're not the same movie. I knew that they weren't the same movie. But there's a part of me that was like, oh, the scene when Will Smith punches the alien in the ship. I'm like, yeah, that's Wild Wild West. But oh, it's, man. It's, <laughs> like, it's not. Obviously, it's not. And I know it's not. But I, I don't know why my brain did that. I guess it was just, you know, as a kid seeing both of these movies and then being like, oh, yeah. I love this one Will Smith movie that Will Smith did one time. Like, no, it's he's a movie star. They're separate well, films. Please stop. Also, when, like, <laughs> when people play the same character and like yeah. it, it's hard sometimes. It's like, wait, he did this thing, but what movie was that in? He's still like, doing. He's yeah. He's performing Will Smith, which you know, to be to be fair, good on him. Like it was the same in Men in Black. Like he, he largely had. Very similar character structure for most of the movies in the 90s, but... Um, I mean, same for Jeff Goldblum, right? Like, Yeah. For, I mean... For, for any of those big stars, when it's when you find your niche initially, like, look at Seth Rogen or Jonah Hill, or, like, it's, like, it is kind of the same character bit over and over and over again until, like, they have that art house where they're, like, I'm going to be drama now, or I'm going to be something that you're unfamiliar, and everyone's, like, what? What was that for Will Smith? Pursuit of Happiness? Ali? I am legend. Is it Ali? Uh, Ali? I don't know. I, Maybe. I'm not as familiar with his s- filmography. Yes. Yeah. I for- I I don't remember. Either way, he's in this movie, and <laughs> it was fun. I like that he also was like, I'm not coming back for that piece of trash. The, this is the second one. Yeah. Did you see that one before or no? No, I'd never seen the second one. Um, So this was a first pass. I actually- what a treat. I completely forgot it existed. I did not realize that Jeff Goldblum was going to be in this. And so when he showed up, I was like, oh, okay. I guess it's more rooted in uh, reality. And then when you see Oakum again, or Oakum, 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 uh, show up later, I'm like, oh, okay. So they are really pulling. And then Bill Pullman also. They're like, oh, okay, they're really pulling from the source material. I mean, Except both of these movies are about dads and their relationship with their children, and oh, yeah. the mothers are nowhere to be seen. And in fact, they kill the mother in the second one. They Should do. we just jump into this? Because I feel like we're getting Let's, into it. Yeah, I know. Let's okay. just hop into the first one. The date, July 2nd, 1996. The place, planet Earth. The problem, an alien mothership has invaded Earth's atmosphere and has sent individual destroyer ships to some of Earth's most populated locations. After decoding a foreign signal in a global satellite transmission, telecommunications hobbyist and casual hacker David Levinson warns the White House of an impending alien attack. Oh no, it's too late! Huge swatches of Earth's major cities have been destroyed and Earth's population is facing imminent extinction. The next day, as counterattacks are hatched, Captain Stephen Hiller is called as squadron leader in Earth's primary response force. After the discovery of the mothership's seemingly impenetrable shield, Hiller takes down an alien ship and steals the body of its pilot to take back to Area 51. It takes a botched autopsy, abusive telepathy, and a silly little hostage situation to discover the root of the alien's plan, strip the Earth of all its natural resources, and end life in its entirety. The following day, July 4th, ugh, Levinson writes a computer virus to hack into the mothership as an attempt to destroy the ship's shields so they can end the invasion once and for all. Levinson and Hiller fly into the mothership, infect the core with the code, and plan on dropping an explosion from the inside. But what's this? Some silly local pilot takes it upon himself to crash his ship into the eye of the weapon as it's about to destroy the Earth and save the entire world? Sure. Levinson and Hiller are credited heroes. There's a silly love triangle, and the Earth is safe for now. For now. This movie hates women and queer people 100 yeah. um, oh yeah speaking of queer people harvey firestein an absolute gem an absolute gem in all of his queer glory just running like excuse me <laughs> like i obsessed <laughs> obsessed with harvey okay um but yeah i think generally like like the 
way that most media, especially in the 90s, uh, depicted any sort of like queerness or gayness in any capacity. It's I mean, it's obviously always the butt of the joke. I mean, I will say I do think that what's his name was in love with Will Smith. I think that that was canon. Like, even though he kept making jokes like, oh, this is how you eat somebody's butt, like standing in front of the thing, like, oh, I'm going to do this. And like, oh, I love you. And like head on shoulder and stuff. Like, it's all for like the sake of humor and all for like fun. And the gag is like, oh, they're gay. So it's funny. But he loved him. He was in love with him without an absolute doubt. Well, I think. And that's like the only time that we see Will Smith characters start to like really process what's happening because before that like literally the earth is like has been attacked and all of these flyboys are just pretending like it's another day and like you know joking and having a good old time right and the only time the gravity of what is happening and like you know mind you like what the hell happened to his girlfriend and her kid right but the only time that this really hits him is when his buddy dies yeah like and then we see him lose his whole shit i mean because i mean it really yeah (laughs) as severe as the events are unfolding i feel like everybody's kind of like underperforming the severity of it and like i know that like will smith has to go to work big air quotes work and like fight against the aliens but like they see this huge ship and it's kind of like oh dang that's scary well my thing got canceled so i actually have to go in and she's like, what? I thought we were like, wait, no, this is kind of serious. Like, thing, bad things are happening. What do you I mean? I mean, but how it's... much more American can you get? Like, that is yeah. the epitome of, like, any sort of thing that happens is just a footnote. It's like, oh, well, that sucks. Um, I got to go to work. I'll, I'll see you later. Or what are we having yeah. for dinner tonight? And, it, like, look at how everybody kind of, how America handled, has been handling the pandemic, right? Yeah. Like, It's just like, oh, well, it's there or, oh, it doesn't exist or, you know, granted, there's like a lot of us that have been staying home and everything. But um, but that didn't surprise me. That felt very realistic. Okay, I guess so. (laughs) But um, speaking of Jasmine, of like the only character's name I remember, Vivica A. Fox, right? Yeah. Incredible. Literally, it does the most out of everybody in this movie. Goes out of her way to save and help people, something that literally nobody else is doing in this entire universe while she's on her way to go see to see her boy so she can, like, you know, be at the base and everything. But literally stops for not just one person, but like an entire truck full of people. She sees yeah. somebody that is potentially moving and it's like, cool, I got you. Let's take you. Like, I'm I'm going to get us to safety, you know? Well, she's also just the coolest character in general because she is so like positive, realized, and empathetic. More so than any other character, just in terms of like, not only on top of willing to help people, obviously, in this sort of like post-apocalyptic, or not post-apocalyptic mm-hmm. situation, but she's also like a stripper and very much just like, yeah, this is my job. Why Why is this a problem? Like when she's talking to the first lady. And she's like, oh, I'm uh, sorry, you're a stripper. She's like, I'm sorry. She's like, don't be. Like, why Why would you say sorry? Like, I'm happy. I love my job. I have a great job. And I make good it, money. It, it pays well. And yeah. I support my awesome kid. Why would I feel bad about that? And even in that moment, too, when she's like, oh, so you know I'm the first lady? She's like, yeah, but I did vote for the other person. So <laughs> I'm not like... I'm not really as stoked, but she's also like, she's still just being humane, which I appreciate. I mean, granted, in this fake political world, who knows what that candidate stands for or what that platform was, right? But there is a level of just like, her general emotional competency in every environment she's placed in, like, she is the strongest character of the entire movie. She's so self-aware and so confident in herself and who she is and her like, where where she is in life that she you know even literally the end of the world can't even break her can't like you know dissuade her from you know giving good advice to people taking care of like her kid and all of these people and never never once like breaks her spirit like she's never like everything is gonna is awful when we see so many men just kind of like break down and not be able to handle themselves or what's happening right yeah um like if she okay if she 
found out that code that David did, Jeff Goldblum's character, she would have been on the phone with fucking everybody with all of the major news outlets, (laughs) unlike fucking that character, which was like, I'm only going to tell my girlfriend. Like, he is. Because maybe it'll get her to break up with her husband, the president of the United States. (laughs) Like, the thruple that she's in, right? Oh, my God. Like, okay. He literally is responsible, in my mind, that character, which I want to get into later, but that character is directly responsible for everybody's death. Yeah. You know, he could have shared that information or got that out another way besides just talking to his ex-girlfriend. So male ego literally destroyed 90% of the population or however much was like decimated of not just the America, but like the entire world. So he put himself on this pedestal that cost literally everybody's lives but But if jasmine had that information she would have been like cool i'm gonna get this out there this is what's gonna happen we're gonna make this like she would have had her own command center and like got all of her stripper friends to be on the phones and making this happen i i don't even want to like speculate but what an absolute banger of a movie that would be i would are you fucking kidding me like Honestly, when they introduced that element, because I don't remember that as a kid of like that, that's her profession. That's what she does. But when she's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go to work. And then she's stripping. I'm like, this is the most interesting part of this movie. I know that the aliens are there, but I'm like, this, this is sick. I love this. And I mean, and it doesn't look down on sex work at all, which is incredible. And which is fantastic. But also, I like that they didn't really dive into I can't get into NASA because my wife's a stripper as like a storyline and for him to be like, Hey, maybe you should like quit so I can follow my dreams. Like I'm so, cause that's obviously like, if this movie was about anything else, that would be a big issue. That would be a plot point for this coupling, right? They're setting that up in this movie to be that. I like that they don't go into it at all. It's just like, Oh yeah, I didn't get in. And And she doesn't really seem bothered by it. No, not at all. It's just like, okay, great. That's just something we're not doing now. His cool. friend that is in love with him was the one that was trying to get him to break up with was the, trying to, yes, with Jasmine. I know. Well, that also leads credence to that idea is that like he is so in love with Will Smith that like in this moment he's like, well, you can't follow your dreams because of your wife because they're not going to accept that. Maybe kiss me instead. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this me? is how this is how you let eat me, it. <laughs> hold on, let me pretend to eat your butt real quick. Boop, 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 boop. It's a joke though. We're not gay. We're not gay. No, 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 no. Let me put my face directly in your butt. But it's a joke because we're not gay. Unless <laughs> you know, I'm like, I mean, truly, like him putting his head on Will Smith's shoulder in that meeting too. I was like, what? This is some smitten behavior. He is obsessed and in love. And I mean, truly, like I know we touched on it before but like that moment when he when he died like right before he dies like it's very clearly like oh yeah i'm never gonna see this person who i love so much ever again fuck Mm -hmm. like i mean that's reading a lot into it but i do think it's there back to jasmine i do love that her character is really just like the most stable for the most part i mean granted i do think they have a really great relationship they both despite the catastrophe of what's going on are kind of like, yeah, I they're, they're out there. I'll find them. It's fine. Like they're there. I don't think either one is very much worried. I think they both know that they're both safe and they're like, we'll, we'll find each other. Like, and like they trust fine. each other, right? They trust like, each other. There's no sort of like, uh, at no point, like you said, was uh, Will Smith's character ever trying to get her to quit her job because that would be better for his career, yeah. which is in direct opposition to Jeff Goldblum's character, which again, we'll get into that. But like through uh, through this relationship, you see just so much like trust, like, yeah, whatever, like, go do this, go make money. Like, you know, I'm going to go make money. You're yeah. going to work. I'm going to work. And also, like, there's so much joy in that relationship and so much like happiness. Like you can there- it's like the only part of the movie where there's like true happiness because everybody else is just all the white people because everybody else in this movie is white. Yeah. It's just so dramatic or so toxic or well, um, so like, I don't want to be the president. I, this is too hard, <laughs> you know? Well, like just comparing the two, like one one thriving relationship and one failed relationship, like just back to back, putting them up against each other. One is fueled by love, respect, understanding, and trust. Very clearly like... There is no shame surrounding this couple or the way that they exist or live. Despite what is happening, nothing necessarily matters outside of that apart from like, I trust you and I love you 
do what you have to do. We'll be fine. So go and take care of whatever you need to take care of. I'm good. Like I'm competent, you're competent, and we're both capable. We can do whatever we need to do to make this happen. Whereas Jeff Goldblum and what is her name? Uh, Constance. Constance. The whole time it's just like, she's like, well, didn't you ever think about your career? Like, didn't you want to go do it? Like, it, it felt like, like a ball pit of distrust. Just constantly. Like He punched this, the president because he thought they were having an affair. Which is, yeah, which is wild. It sucks. Like, I get that that line is supposed to be really sad. And it it does seem really sad. She's like, don't you, what did she say? Um, don't you want something that's perfect? Or don't you want to be part of something that matters? Yeah, and he's something like, like that. And he's, and he's like, like, I, I was. was. Yeah. Yeah. Which I love, but at the same time, based on his behavior, <laughs> it's like, oh, wait, were you actually really toxic? <laughs> like, maybe you were, like, not a great partner. And maybe she wanted a decent partner. How about that? Like, despite the love aspect, love has nothing to do with it. Like, well, were you were you bad? <laughs> she still lends credence to that, though, because she's like, oh, well, I love you, but that's not that wasn't enough. Right. Which yeah. is like good because she's trying to, like, tell him, like, we're on equal playing field. This is where we are and this is where we exist. And this is where I need you to exist. And instead of doing that, he he just paints her out to be um, this person that wants him like like his dad to like overachieve and do something great motherfucker went to like mit for eight years and he just like is doing literally the least but putting like okay we're gonna get into him um he's literally putting (laughs) everybody down because they're not as environmentally conscious as him right yeah but like that's another way for him to like flex his superiority complex because like that he is denying himself all of these pleasures, all of these things, like, you know, smoking the cigar at the end where he's like, oh, I always thought these would kill me. You know what? This isn't so bad. And like, you know, being pissed off at his dad for like the coffee cup. And then, oh, I ride my bike to work. I'm so much better than everybody. Like, but again, that's just another way for him to elevate himself because he doesn't actually have the motivation to elevate himself in a meaningful way to society i just i really hate this character so much he sucks he really sucks like even i i don't know i feel like the way he talks to his dad similarly it's just like he's kind of like this messy ego like obviously an ego driven asshole who thinks that like he deserves everything just because he exists i mean typical cishet perspective more often Mm -hmm. just in terms of like his maleness he like is still wearing his wedding band after three years of being divorced which is so manipulative and just like messy like hey queen stop like you know you're gonna go see her that and that's that's a mess. That's he, that's a big mess. Like he you felt asshole. so threatened by the president, like before he became the president or whatever. Yeah. That like he literally made her choose between her career and him mm-hmm. and still wears the wedding band is like, well, I was a part of something special with you. Right. But then later on and like Constance is like basically a nothing character, because even though like they're they paint her as like having all of this autonomy, she still like is like, hey, I love you. But. And then, like, at the wedding later on, then she, like, has this, like, look with him, right? And then literally the one time that, like, that Jeff Goldblum's character tries to do something good for humanity, which may cost him his life, that's when she tells him to, like, she's, like, holding him back from what he's, like, what he's supposed to do and everything. And he throws that in her face, right? So that's just, like... The way that she's written is she doesn't know what she wants, but Jeff knows what's best and she should have trusted Jeff is kind of how I read that character. So even though she's supposed to be autonomous and even though we're supposed to think like, oh, cool, how awesome she, you know, she left him and she did all of this, you know, it's it falls back into that trope of just like, you know, all of the choices that that character makes discredit how the character was set up and work to dismantle that. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. I do. I was so mad when she's like, "I still love you." I'm like, "Why? Why are we doing this?" Like, do you think I? What did she say? Do you think I ever stopped loving you? I'm just like, I, I like, like, I get it. I get that. Like, that can still exist. But the way that they're setting this up for them to like fall back in love, I just like, no, I don't like it because again, she isn't real in this world. She is just a toy. 
for him. And then this is another way that he's putting – because Jeff Goldblum's character is responsible for everybody that died that day, right? And by her not picking up his call – He's making her responsible and trying to say, I tried to call you. I tried to do this. Look, I had to come over here to tell you this information, right? So, like, putting that responsibility on her because he tried. He did the bare yeah. minimum and called his he's, ex-fucking-girlfriend. He's a manipulative wife, asshole. Whatever. He's a manipulative. He's a manipulator. That's all he is. So. And again, totally just driven by ego. He thinks he is owed all of this for nothing, for no reason. He thinks he's better than everybody. That's the vibe. Mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. fuck his character. I hated his character. I also just didn't like the president. I thought that he was also just like messy and foolish and He's a young a young moderate democrat. Did you get that? Cuz there was the line in the beginning about how uh, cuz they kind of talk about his centrism and then they also talk about um when they're flipping through the news channels like how he just keeps giving money to all of these programs, right? Yeah. And He's attacked for being too young and idealistic and his politics are too much compromise, which is like also weird because he's like, uh, I mean, I guess it tracks, but like he is very pro military because he's a pilot and stuff, too. So like while he's painted as like not explicitly said like he's a Democrat, but he's you know, he has all of these moderate Democrat ideals or like language surrounding him and him as a president. He's also very much into the military, right? And that's also funny because going back to Jasmine, that means that she's, if that is true, right? She's a Republican (laughs) because, which yeah, which is also because like, she's like, oh, well, I voted for the other guy, whatever, you know, when like the president is trying to like throughout this whole thing, trying to say like, I don't want to put nukes on, I don't want to nuke those things because what about the people? And I don't want to do this because what about the people? But he never actually does anything he just says hey stay in your home and be safe and then he like even when like all of these people are in area 51 you know and they could potentially start like you know talking about organizing the the people that are survived that have survived and like coordinating like you know uh, rescue efforts and stuff Instead, he's going off and playing, like, Flyboy, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, he's then suddenly a badass president. But, like, he's also surrounded by all of these career politicians that, like, uh, while he has remorse for the decisions that cost lives, he's given two outs. One out because the Secretary of Defense never told him about the aliens in Area 51, right? So he could have, quote-unquote, plausible deniability, which super tracks with government and all of that, right? Yeah. But then he also, he's given, a like, a fucking easy out because the alien literally is just the most generic bad guy ever who says, we want all your resources, we're going to kill everybody, there will be no peace. And it's like, oh, cool. Like, so he doesn't have to feel bad about whatever he's going to do to them or like that's justified and so the viewer doesn't also have to feel any sort of conflict within this right yeah because it was literally there will be no peace we're gonna kill you yeah it is it is as heightened as so like silly stakes which i think just leads to the greatness of this movie just in terms of like it's silly like it is a silly movie where like the bad guy is literally saying we're just gonna kill you all and take your stuff bye like that's <laughs> ultimately like the the main the main bad i mean playing into that sort of biden-esque way of being a president did you catch that entrant or like the way that they introduced his daughter in this where he's on the phone with his wife and then he tells her i'm sleeping next to a beautiful young brunette and then camera reveal it's their child. Oh. Yeah. Big yeah. O. Oh. Yeah. Fucking yeah, yeah. yikes. Like I I was just like, wait, what? That's mm, what it what why? What what is that? What is that about? Why are we doing that, y'all? What is the what is to be gained from this? A reveal? You needed a reveal. So you decide to coat that in ancestral pedophilia. That's cute obsessed with that writing um anyways i hated that and i mean it really that kind of painted for me at least his character a little bit i know it's supposed to be like big air quotes cute but initially right off the bat as the movie started i'm like i don't like this guy this guy's a bad guy 
that's gross. Why would he say that? Why is he thinking that? Get him away from well, that. Well, and like, again, literally, like, he keeps trying to, he has all of these moments where he expresses remorse for not evacuating cities or for, you know, like, for the people. We don't want to nuke this because what about the people who, like, you know, literally are just dying? You haven't fucking tried anything except for yeah. sending a couple helicopters up, right? But, like, if he cared so much about the people, why the f- fuck? Did he leave civilians in the front of Area 51 in their yeah. campers in the middle of the sweltering desert, knowing full well that there was going to be an alien attack that was happening? And it literally took somebody being like, oh, yeah, but there's people out there. Oh, yeah. we need them because of pilots. So they only they have literally value. literally forgot about them. They only <laughs> yeah. have. Even though they're really like they're right there on their front door, like so it they literally don't have any value until they can provide for the government and for the military. Oh yeah. Another thing going into like kind of the gross misogyny and pedophilia stuff. Um, did you also catch when after uh, the first blast, whenever um, when it went over to the trailer kids, um, the trailer park kids, and the sister was in the car with this dude that was trying to be like, this could be our last night. You don't want to die a virgin. Ew, no. Yeah. Wait, really? Yeah, that really happened. And like, we don't, that's like one of the only scenes. That's one of the only scenes that we see in like her in because other like, or like her be a main character in that scene because like everything else, she's just kind of in the frame or like there as like a general family unit. But this one was specifically like, It was her and then she leaves and then, you know, like whatever. But like she doesn't she doesn't buy it or anything. But like this. Yeah. Like this nine year old boy or like 15 year old. I don't I don't know how old he was because it was just the car or whatever. But like that's the language that these children are using with each other when they're talking about the end of the world. They're like, you know, because this is the world that they grew up in and this is what they're supposed to do. And that's their their learned behaviors. You don't want to die a virgin. Let's go. So fucking gross. Yeah. I didn't even catch that at all. It was super gross. And going further back to when we were talking about homosexuality um, and how this movie also hates gay people, the speaking of the trailer guy, uh, the tra- the dad, the pilot, the, the drunk guy oh, that was yeah. abducted by aliens and these same aliens, right, and tested on it. Everybody thinks that he's crazy and they're treating him lesser than and like a joke. And so we, we don't get to see him when he came back and like because he obviously told people, one, he tried to get help and nobody believed him and he wasn't able to get any sort of help, which he is a veteran too. So like, you know, that, that goes into that conversation too about like, post-traumatic stress and all of that and how they can't get help but then he went over and he just self-medicated because what the fuck else was he gonna do because now literally everybody around him like his kids are on a first name basis with him they don't call him dad until the very end when he's gonna sacrifice himself they call him by his first name and then like the neighbors that we see they're literally talking about like they're they're asking him if he was probed and if like you know if they stuck it in his ass like that sort of language and they're laughing and it's supposed to be funny and they're saying this shit on tv too which is you know they're like they're just like oh butt stuff you took it in the butt and like are giggling about it and it's so frustrating because then even at the very end he is like cool i'm gonna pilot this i'm gonna go for it also i was abducted by aliens And even though we're in the middle of an alien attack by these same aliens, everybody is looking at him like he's crazy, still being in this moment with literal proof as to, like, what happened to him and everything, right? And so he's still not being treated like a normal person. And he's still not even given any of that validation until he sacrifices himself and kills himself. Yeah. I mean... His character was very strange to me in terms of he seemed pointless, just in the context of the narrative. That whole subset of character development with him and his family, I literally felt like I was watching a different movie. Like, that they could have literally not been there and nothing would have changed about They did not need to be there. You know, like, his character literally just could have been a rocket launched at the thing. And that's it. That's the only need of of like his physical person there but to add to what you were saying about the idea of sort of sexual submissiveness in that way where like 
there's an expectation of within sort of a hetero binary perspective of like female submissive male dominant idea. And so the only reason that like gay sex, gay butt jokes are funny to a general population is because it breaks the binary expectation of submission and dominance. And that's all it is. It's just misogyny at work really is that idea of like, Oh, a man is performing as big air quotes, a woman. Oh, what a loser. What a weak person. Because again, in our society, there's an expectation that women are weak and to be the submissive partner and to be submissive in general and in life and to be subservient. That's just the vibe. That's just what it is. Like, I mean, like, it's so it was I mean, obviously fucked up and childish and stupid. But to me, like it, that whole sequence of because they're in the cafe, it's like right before the, the or at least the first iteration they're in that cafe. It's right before they see the ship for the first time. I almost completely glazed over it as like a, <laughs> as soon as they're like, oh, yeah, because he, you know, I'm like, wait. Oh, yeah, because they think that that anal sex is oh, okay. Yeah, is yeah, yeah for funny. sure. Oh, yeah, this is supposed to be like I it almost completely pass over me just in terms of like oh that was supposed to be a joke like a gay joke oh okay because <laughs> like, yeah. like i think of just i it's such it, it's a bad b just my the way my brain sees the world now as an adult as like a queer adult it just didn't register that that was like a derogatory thing <laughs> just in terms of like oh you know and i was like oh yeah of course oh you're saying it as like a mean thing oh okay so 90s so stupid it's terrible it's awful but i hated that whole second part of the movie with them and that character i don't think also fuck that actor what is his name randy quaid Uh, i fucking hate randy quaid he's just like a big trump piece of shit trash can Ooh, joy that tracks yeah he's a fucking mess but yeah i just i hated that whole portion but speaking of like gay sex again I do want to talk about just the idea of male camaraderie when it comes to smoking cigars. Just the cigar itself as a sign of celebration and of ease, as something that's like an oral fixation, because oftentimes they're not smoking to inhale, they're smoking to like for mouthfeel, for flavor, and that's like how you smoke cigars. Cigars are dicks. Cigars are phallic. Cigars are <laughs> like truly, like it is just an oral ceremony a performance a performance of of like suck like literally sucking on a cigar like in front of each other it's it super is phallic. it's this super performative way to like that exemplifies a queer act like sucking dick <laughs> they're like in the same room looking at each other watching as you suck on these cigars there is something so homoerotic about that idea but it's been so pulled from that idea of sexuality that you they kind of can perform <laughs> that with and around each other but without it being sexual i mean there's a whole subset of like kink in the sort of gay male space of cigar play of like cigar performance to some degree because cigars are phallic and it is sort of this like hyper hyper masculine performance of like power and celebration Mm -hmm. that like whenever i see that in like straight spaces it literally has no other connotation for me other than (laughs) it like oh be like i i can see this through this queer lens of what i've known and seen in queer spaces yeah that's all that that is it's just male performance for each other to be some sort of emblematic ritual of fellatio that's all it is so in these moments too with will smith and um Jeff Goldblum and his friend because remember his friend they were like oh Oh, we got our cigars yes yes exactly so it it really that's largely what it is because it it is this moment of like ease it's like this tension break and they get to just relax and be them be big air quotes themselves and like be easy around each other be a little bit vulnerable like the lack of tension there and sort of the celebration of that ease feels so homoerotic in this especially that first time where they're talking about it and then at the end when they're like walking and they're like smoking a cigar with each other like ha 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 look at us we did it it's like hey whoa yeah well and know. that like um cigars are also like incredibly male like yes. whenever you see a, a woman smoking a cigar it is like 
you see a man smoking cigar and like you said it's like it's celebration it's supposed to be like also kind of a um a status symbol right so like elevating you above others and when women do it it doesn't have any of the that connotation right? it's just sex and power when it's women it is it is it is it's a gross pre- it's gross like, yeah yeah well it's it because it's so male gazy it yes. is so when when in media a woman is smoking a cigar it's male or a, gaze for mo- for males for men. seen yes. through male characters but that is not allowed to it's gay. female characters it's gay it is gay 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 <laughs> gay 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 truly because at the end of the day like that is why when it's performed as such in media when the, a femme presenting person is smoking a cigarette and it's obviously written for the male gaze for the male characters to be like wow look power she's so hot because there is this implication of fellatio where she has that in her mouth and they're like wow that could be me that's the whole vibe that's why there's tension that's why it's supposed to be big air quotes hot so but if it's men- a cigar like yeah. women, oh, th- can't, saying, women can oh, do with, that with cigar. cigarettes but like i i feel like i haven't really seen a lot of like sexiness with like a cigar because that's not as appealing when women have that oh. because it is a masculine form of uh it's more it's more hyper masculine because it's bigger because it's this it's oh yeah it- no but that's what i mean in in times when a woman is smoking a cigar not a cigarette i think cigarettes are are are, are masculine in a, in a way but i do think that like the cigar moment when it is a woman smoking a cigar that's what i'm talking about in this in this context mm-hmm. where the man is mm-hmm. like oh that could be me also look at that power wow they look like a man they're performing as a man with power got it, got it, got it. i'm attracted to that I'm attracted to that masculinity and I'm attracted to that power. It's very gay. It's just super gay. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yeah, I just, I think cigars are gay as fuck. And I think that ritual celebration of smoking as a way to celebrate with these other men is literally just like a fucking circle jerk, but without the sexual performance of it all. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I So in any context, I mean, especially in this movie with the Will Smith character and that sort of like, what if love uh, or sort of like uh, forbidden queer love between him and that uh, other pilot, the cigar moment was just gay as fuck <laughs> <laughs> is really all I had to say about it. <laughs> I clearly super agree. I mean, this this movie is just dripping male gaze and masculinity. This is, oh, a, yeah. this is a film about dads. Like, I mean, even Jeff Goldblum and his dad, I mean, they have this whole relationship where like, his dad doesn't believe in him until like then all of a sudden the the president is like he's he's giving advice to the president and he's like oh yeah you did a good job David you did good yeah. you know like um so it's it's all about men <laughs> yeah it's it is a movie for men I mean I'm gonna touch on it more in the next one but I do want to dip into a little bit of the idea of like protecting land or protecting sort of like a home state as an idea especially when it comes to like a movie that's titled independence day that is so like performative patriotism and performative american superiority you know what i mean Mm -hmm. just in terms of like because again this movie is supposed to be centered around the idea that like the world is being taken over but no it's a movie about the world, the world being the United States, is being taken over. And then in the end, it's like, oh, here's Egypt and here's China and here's Australia. Like, see, they got hit too. But obviously it's America that saved today because America's number one. Go us. Woo. But it's also just <laughs> like in, in conversation with like colonialism at large and the taking of land. I don't know how much you want to get into that conversation because it obviously is like, duh america's trash and they stole land and that we're just here on stolen land we don't belong here that's the whole deal but a movie that's trying to promote this idea of like patriotic propaganda in terms of like saving the land from invaders i don't like this movie in terms of that just because of the way that like it's sold to consumers as this sort of like yeah let's celebrate the 4th of July and let's protect our land. We are America and let's unify as one. Let's unify against these invaders. Uh, When the whole basis, the foundation of America was we were the invaders and we came and killed and stole. But now it's like, Oh no, forget about that history. What if, what if this happened and we had to unify and we have to protect what's ours because it's ours. It's like, well, no, it's not. I just, I don't like it as a piece of sort of 
just cartoonishly patriotic propaganda. Especially I think that when was it is big... just white people, white straight people. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I completely agree. As a whole, as a movie, sure, it's fun and big. Aliens fighting, love it. Love the silliness. I think as a whole, I really do hate this movie because <laughs> because because of that. Because it's under this like sort of brainwashy guise of patriotism that the only reason it exists is to make people think or be more patriotic or attempt to be more patriotic as a way to unify, which is also false and manipulative. I mean, both of both films do that. Both in of terms, them, yeah. Like, and they're both elevating Americans above everybody else and American intellect, yeah. uh, specifically American intellect. Like, they do try to, like, be a little bit more um, global in the second one. But again, that's all performative, and we'll, we'll get into that. But, like, I mean, the audacity, like, to The which... audacity, truly. The <laughs> audacity. Just period, end of sentence. The audacity. <laughs> I couldn't like, agree more. Okay, look, these aliens have <laughs> been probing people for for years, clearly, at least 10, because yeah. we have that one witness. Or And before that, with Roswell and stuff, because they tied all that shit in, right? And, you know... To have a species that is so much more advanced that we are, right, and clearly has done whatever they're doing multiple times to multiple civilizations, like, that's that's their whole MO as a species. That's what they do, right? So why the fuck didn't the aliens ask for any sort of verification when a ship that's been missing for 50 fucking years that maybe doesn't even belong to their little hive like on that specific ship why the fuck didn't they at, like get on the telepathic radio and be like yo what up like where you been like hey yeah. what's going on how could they not see that at how and how like and then like they just let it dock and didn't go and check it out or anything you know like at the very least if they're not going to verify it just make somebody go check like there there's fucking aliens there we know just do it like yeah so in order to elevate the idea of americanism and american intellect we have to make these bad guys that are clearly a superior species and yeah. have so much more technology and everything we have to make them not smart at all yeah. oh yeah oh, like yeah. which completely like unravels the entire film so like that's one of the points where i was just like they're not that like they're, they're not so that foolish smarter. they're yeah. they're they they know they know what they're doing and how to do it and they've done it as we've been told thousands of times before yeah that's all i got <laughs> did i have any like fun little notes i mean apart from like which we'll talk about but making well you know i'm gonna save it my thoughts on Dr. Oaken. Yes. Um, well, I'll save for the next one. Because I feel like I have more to say about him in the next one than this one. Let's talk about that one. Should we do it? Yeah, let's just jump into the okay. next one. The date, July 2nd, 2016. The place, planet Earth. The problem, the unexpected destruction of a moon base has revealed the aliens are back and they're bigger and badder than ever before. After the death of Stephen Hiller, it's now up to his son Charlie to take the reins of the family legacy by being the celebrity space pilot who helps stop the second alien invasion. JK, a Hemsworth by the name of Jake Morrison is out here to be the protagonist. Levinson is back, but this time with a new shiny title and the sneaking suspicion that this time the aliens are led by a queen, and if they kill the queen, the hive mind will retreat back to their home world. Meanwhile, Dr. Akun is back, gay, and has discovered a sphere of virtual intelligence. Remember that symbol that nobody could decipher? Well, it's a drawing of this cute all-knowing orb of change that, for some reason, is the alien's only realistic foe. OMG. <laughs> Hiller and Morrison are no longer fighting, love, and are tasked with entering the ship to weaken its defenses, a la the first one, but end up getting trapped in a Halo-esque style ground fight with the mothership aliens. What's this? The aliens are using Cutie Pie Orb's location to ultimately kidnap, destroy, and erase Earth's only shot at survival and thriving new post-world eradication? And now Queen Alien herself is stomping across the desert only to be destroyed by this ragtag team of scientists and Earth protectors? Sure. Earth is saved yet again, and oh yeah, it's Independence Day. Surprise! <laughs> Surprise! Surprise. I want to start where I was leaving off the last one, which is Akun? Is you say his name? I believe so. Okun. Okun. 
Um, I fully, 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 fully love that they just were like, no, he's gay and this is his husband. <laughs> just, nope, that's it. Yeah. Is, is gay. This person is the husband. And he's like, babe. And like, because to me, so much media will always like imply queerness and imply queer relationships. Just like, oh, well, they're like friends who live together just in that way where it's like so watered down. Like, we don't want to think about like sex between these characters because ew, queerness grows. But I love that, like, just off the bat, is gay, has been gay, this husband's been there forever. And it's like, oh my God, sweetie, you're awake. I love you. Oh my God. And they're walking. He's like, People can see your butt. Like it's like you let them you let people like like it's 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 the funny, like silly stupidity of like cute loving relationships and like somebody who will love and be there for you regardless. I mean, granted, I don't like that they did the queer people can't have happy endings trope. <laughs> I screamed uh, that, when I, he was killed. Because initially screamed. I truly I was already writing the notes when they gunned down the pallets. I was like, oh cool, they kill they killed a happy gay couple. Great. Like they're both dead. They just plow them down perfect. But then when they're both like getting back up, I was like, wait, oh my God, is this a misdirect? Are they making us think they're gonna do this trope? But then one of them gets shot and then dies and you're like, wait, what the fuck? That's the only, I'm like, I love the introduction. I love the inclusion. I love the way they did it. Because again, they did not water down the idea that these two kind of heavy set hairy men have sex with each other. I love it, especially for such a mainstream movie. But then they did the thing where they kill off one of them. Queer people cannot be happy. Uh, Die. F word die. (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah. And and that's one of the reasons why I think that this movie it tries to like pat itself on the back a couple times where it's like, look, we're inclusive. Look, we're yeah. like, it's just that performative progress, right? Like, look, yeah, 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 yeah. we Perfect. have, there's a Chinese actor in this. Look at, there's, um, there's another black main character besides just the son. Well, also look at, there's, we have gay people. Look, there's a woman president, but like in that same space, right? The last film was arguably about the president right and about the pilot this movie was about the scientist and jeff again well i guess jeff was a main subject but it was arguably a lot of it was centered on the president but instead we only get like two lines from the president and she's just like fucking nuke him right and she makes all of the wrong decisions and looks kind of incompetent and performative herself because she cares more about the ceremony than actually whatever kind of threat is going is oh yeah absolutely right and so she's so jeff uh, Jeff Goldblum is single, apparently, but also rewarded for now directly disobeying her orders to go check this thing out that she's not even worried about, you yeah. know? Um, so, again, cool, there's a woman president. Oh, wait, she's incompetent and performative and doesn't care about her job. Like, I could not agree with you more in terms of the way that they're performing this kind of forward thinking where it's like, obviously, the lead of the last one was... Will Smith. His son is in it. Cool. Will Smith's not back. They're writing him off as dead. The way that this movie's introducing his son as the protagonist, I'm like, sick. This is the lead actor of the of the movie. This is his story. I'm on board. He's this young black actor. Get it. I'm into it. As soon as they introduce him and he's like, you're his son and we celebrate you and your dad and ooh, we love that. We love you. Cut to literally who the fuck even cares Hemsworth on the moon for three years. Being a toxic and then it's piece of shit. Being an absolute mon- like a d- dumb white asshole. And then it's like, well, we're fighting. And then you reintroduce who is supposed to be the protagonist for a second, but then it goes back to him. And then at the end, I'm like, we're friends again. But now he's playing second fiddle, but he essentially. he looks bad, too, because he straight up punched him. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, it's, when it's, literally uh, that he deserved it. When he is just a bad person yes. and bad at following orders and caring about literally anybody but himself. Like, but, but, but the whole movie is centered around this idea and the trope of the misunderstood hero. Like, if only people would pay attention and see me for my worth they would see that i'm competent and capable but he's not competent and capable he's putting other people's lives at risk people around him are capable he is benefiting from the capability of those around him and luck like i mean that first instance of like well i saved everything it's like yeah sure but that could have gone wrong in so many different ways and again i guess i again i and know that that's have. the 
Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like the, the direction that came from the, the people on the star base should have been all of the tugs move to this position and go up. Because if one of them could do it, all of them could do it. But like I really and so it's like this subtle re, like supposedly subtle reframing of uh, and recontextualization of actual events and what's happening. One of the things I fucking hate about movies that I think that is so tired is when they make the hero defy the rules like you were saying to benefit themselves or to elevate themselves or to show how much better they are than their superiors or they know more than anybody else right because like again if one tug could have done that two could have like had it no problem this wouldn't have been a fucking issue but instead this is a big giant dramatic ass moment for no fucking reason for no reason and then like jeff somehow knows this kid because he is the boyfriend of the president's daughter who is a amazing pilot but not allowed to pilot which we'll get into that later and so jeff just calls him like hey come pick me up real quick yeah like let's go do this because they're now they're pairing them together because they don't follow rules but it's like that reframing of things like even stuff like oh we're falling oh no no this is a controlled dive like that's fucking gaslighting yeah He's he's a bad he's a bad man. He's just a bad toxic man. Like that's it. And I hated the fact that he was this lead. I mean, on top of the way that they framed it, it was just so boring and silly. And I mean, again, going to what you were saying about like say the introduction of like not necessarily an all white cast. You have this actor who's speaking Mandarin, right? And part of so. the part of the idea with that character in that scene when he's the boss, he's coming, he's angry, he's speaking Mandarin. The throwaway line is to belittle the language and belittle him by being like, oh, I don't know. I don't know his language. Oh, it's so funny because what? (laughs) Like, why is, how is that fun or funny? But it's a way to like reiterate and reinstill the point of this protagonist that they're trying to set up where like, sure, he breaks the rules and yes, his boss is mad at him, but he knows more. Like, he literally... Why? Does he? No, he doesn't. He's a fool. He's a fool who gets lucky. That's it. He literally, when he's on the alien ship, like on the on the big one, right? And he's like, oh, we're going to steal one of these things, right? He's like, I'll distract them. He pulls out his dick to distract the aliens yeah. and just pisses all over their, their thing, right? And he's like, I've been waiting to do this. Like, this, first of all, was a very horny movie. And one of his wet dreams has been whipping it out in front of these aliens. Which is just... Boring as fuck. Yeah. It truly did not make sense why he exists in this world. Again, you literally just could have given it to to Will Smith's character's son. Like, that's how you set this fucking movie up. Why? Oh, that's right. We need a white male protagonist. Got it. Thanks. Him or... Like, that's it. The or only his, reason. his gross friend, too, which when we first saw both of them, I was like, oh, they're gay. They're queer. Well, that, right? the thing is, is I like to me, they were so toxically straight. Even the performance of closeness was so far from queer <laughs> to me, just because like at least the other two, they had a closeness that was like, like, yeah, we're kind of we're kind of like there's some levity. There's some silliness like we can be silly, but like I'm going to like longingly like kind of touch your shoulder. Like we're going to have a small like we're going to look at each other and we're going to know that like you're the one mm-hmm. outside of all of that silliness. The two of them, I felt like they were just I don't know. I felt like they hated each other I, and they were just putting up with one another in this space. And they just like I have to be the alpha here, whereas obviously there's a. Hemsworth is the the big in charge one but the other one's like well I'm smart too and I know what's going on I'm a oh, silly sidekick glasses oh you know what I mean like <laughs> yeah the only reason why I think that or why I got that is because I had seen this before and I knew the level of writing in this and how performative it was so it's yeah. like what would a writer that wrote this female president this way and wrote all of these other female characters this way what are they like this is their interpretation of what yeah. what queer baiting is right this is yeah. this is that interpretation <laughs> at yeah, least to me i was like this is i, th- I think yeah. on a second watch if i were to watch it again which i won't um i i i could i could see that given given its current context in my mind i think i would probably get to that same place i also just want to point out this movie did not need to have this many characters like 
this many storylines, this many characters. Like it was, I know it was only like two hours and 20 minutes, but it felt like No, this was only two hours. It was two hours? The first one was two hours and 20 minutes. This movie felt so fucking long. Like I just, just with the president's daughter and like the father daughter dynamic, there's the current or like the ex president and his daughter. And then there's the current president. And then there is Hemsworth and his sidekick, semi queer nerd buddy along with their boss who is then doing this other thing. But then there's Goldblum and his dad, the whole dad son dynamic on that end. And the children. With that random bus of kids on top of, everything else oh on top of the other sergeant who then gets sworn in as president later when the president dies and then now that they're president his whole dynamic with his sort of second and third in command that whole group of men the secretary of defense is still there true yeah how yeah so there's like that whole dynamic and then on top of that you have the gay doctor and his husband trying to like solve oh what's this a brand new character again this orb of intelligence who's now telling you all this stuff on top of everything like the way that they're trying to entangle all of these different storylines for no fucking reason (laughs) and it's just so confusing don't forget about the um the psychologist woman that uh jeff goldblum tries to hit on right away yeah and it's a kimbe right where they're like okay cool let's introduce these two characters and okay cool we're going to set up like they you know um i like it would have been really interesting had like oh they've been in proximity of this working uh which i i want to get yeah. into a little bit more about that <laughs> that whole thing but that could have been cool it's like okay they've been in proximity to this they are telepathically sensitive to all of this you know but instead of like having that play out in the story in a cool way and especially with the psychologist being there right like that means nothing like that Truly. that means literally nothing it's just like a way to be like oh god my brain hurts <laughs> like, yeah there's I- nothing I honestly forgot these other storylines even happened because they did. They absolutely did. They're like setting all of these little traps and it just, what is this fucking crash? Stop it. Like this is so silly. They fucking killed Jasmine. Like we see Jasmine for two seconds and great. Like she's still helping people like, and she's a doctor now. Like cool. Awesome. But she's literally dies for no reason. For no reason. Literally no reason. Yeah, yeah. Because truly, in my head, I was like, "Oh, perfect! Like Jasmine's gonna be in this sick. Like they're gonna save her. That's how they're setting it up." And then she falls, and then keeps falling, and I'm like, "Wait, okay, wait, what's happening?" And then it's next scene, and I'm like, "Oh, oh, okay, so she's dead. So we're just gonna kill her." Okay, the cool. best character right. from the first one. It's really but the we're best gonna keep all of these problematic men. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! And then uh, the fucking sorry. This made me so mad. The final flight with uh, the ex-president and his daughter where she said, like, just her saying, like, yes, sir, made me throw up. Like, ooh, like now you have permission and you're saying yes, sir, to your dad. Like, get out of here. Go eat his fucking shoe, you foolish characters. Like, this is so... It made like her just saying yes, sir. It's supposed to be a tearjerker moment where like daddy finally said yes and I get to fly and possibly die for my country, patriot. I'm like, this is literally so gross and fuck this. I hate this so much. Like, because he has held her back from all of that because he he went insane, right? So, or like supposedly insane. So she literally gave up like her whole career as this incredible pilot, right? To care for him, which. They got money. They could have had somebody else take care of, but no, no, no. Like, she had to be the one, right? Yeah. Fucking fine. I hate that so much. I hate it too. Um, but then when she decide, when she was like, great, this is my moment. I am going to do this. Like, he still fucking takes that away from her, right? Like, he's like, I got you, whatever. And it's supposed to be like touching that she wasn't going to go die and sacrifice herself for humanity. No, no, no. Daddy gets to do that. You're going to hang out here. Like, it's fine. And then the only thing, because, like, she's in this movie quite a bit, but she literally has no value. And she's, because she's also connected with the Hemsworth, too, I cared so much less. Um, Oh, my God. But, like, 
the only thing that she <laughs> actually does that moves the plot forward is she takes down the queen's armor. That's yeah. That's it. That's, That's it. literally it. Also, let's talk about women against women. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, well, we I, are literally so, killing I, the I only know. mother that is in the I show. Know. Wait, okay. No, but but really, though, <laughs> who else we see? Because, uh, like, the first one, at least the moms were, or, like, one mother was there, and there was a couple of women around, right? But in, and it was all just about dads. This one is still just about dads. We killed the mom. We killed all of the mothers. They are all dead yeah. in this movie. <laughs> Long live the patriarchy. All dead. R.I.P. the matriarch. And then we also have to go and kill the mother alien, right? Yeah. Because <laughs> she is the key to bringing down the whole civilization. And that's how they are different than than America, right? Because we're built on patriarchy. And they're so, built on matriarchy. And matriarchy is bad. Patri- and matri- matriarchy good. Patriarchy is sustainable and will always be there and has a structure. But matriarchy, if if she goes, they all don't know what to do with themselves because they don't know how to think for themselves when yeah. a woman's not around. Toxic. Toxic, even. Mm. I, I in jest I made that joke but absolutely I couldn't agree with you more that that's literally what this is saying the idea of trying to make them like the hive mind with the queen and if you kill the queen you like it's literally this movie that is so pro and imbued with patriarchal idealism and the way that patriarchy runs the world and runs America at large and the the power structures that be pitting that against literally a similarly powerful structure, but it is a matriarch is uh, so interesting. I mean, like also look at the kind of people that we're supposed to root for in here. We've already established that the Hemsworth is a gross boy. We know that Jeff is a problematic motherfucker who continues to be problematic here. Still not married, right? Like the Constance is nowhere to be found. And he's hitting on the psychologist by demeaning her, right? By putting her down. Then we also have um, Hemsworth's friend, uh, the gr- I, he's just in my notes as gross dude, who like one of the first things out of his mouth is there's only 36 women on the star base. One Ooh. will come around. Yeah. And then he starts as soon as he sees um, the Chinese woman, the, the Chinese pilot, he's like, oh, my God, like she's the one I'm going to marry her. I know. And. The way that he talks to her and approaches her is one of the grossest things that I've ever seen. And at first, like, she wasn't having any of it, right? She's like, well, fuck you, even though, like, it was meant to be kind of flirty, I guess. But, like, later on, like, he says, oh, well, nobody dies today. Are you with me? And she's like, yeah, wink. And suddenly, like, they're cool. Like, he's getting rewarded, and she promises to go to dinner with him and stuff like that for just existing and being a gross boy like what what an incel dude you know yeah it also it that moment in particular i was like oh wow yeah they're really just rewarding these trash and she has no lines she's just literally there these characters exist to date the men i mean that's literally it and it's so clear and evident like just also just on top of the way that they have to wrap everything up with this like little romantic bow like so I'm so fucking bored of that. Like, yeah. why is it that all these straight characters who also don't even like each other and they're bad, they get these beautiful little, like, romantic endings when there really was literally no romance? Like, literally, she did not have to say anything. She did not like him. He was being an absolute trash can to her. And then afterwards, she's like, take me on a date first. Wink. Okay, so they're dating now. They're on a ro- like a romantic thing. Meanwhile, the husband who was at his husband's bedside for literally two decades has to die for what? Why? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it. It is just so silly and bad. Oh my god! The more I talk about this, the more I hate it. Okay, I will say some of the visuals though, really into them. Like how everything was just being pulled from earth. I was like, yes, all the boat stuff, love the boat stuff here for the boat <laughs> stuff. Um, them flying under the golden gate bridge. And they comment about like, they really love our monuments. Ha ha ha. Loved it. I know it's so goofy and corny. 
I was here for it. I loved it, obsessed with it. Everything falling into it, like that kind of devastation, absolutely give it to me a million times over. And when Queen Alien is running through the desert, like, fuck it, I'll get out of my ship. I don't need that ship. I'm going to go and get the orb my fucking self, and you're not going to fucking stop me. I was like, this is amazing. And I love the way she looks. She's humongous and scary and terrifying. And that whole scene, she looked great. The whole shit with the bus under her feet. I was like, yeah, I love this. Stakes, we're into them. It just, the visual of all of that, as a viewer, outside of these characters who are bad, I loved how it looked. Oh my God, I love that sequence. I mean, like, if it was- the lines were written smarter and the characters less cringy, like, it this could've... movie could have been, it had if, promise. If you took out half of the characters, too. If you took just took cut out, yes. half of them. You know what I mean? Like, just b- make it less of a fucking Avengers fucking Civil War Part 2 or whatever. Yeah, you have not done the work. You Thank literally you. have not done that. You cannot knock all of this or squeeze all of this into two hours. Like, stop. Cut half the characters. Punch up that dialogue. Make it less problematic. Make the characters more likable and less trash. The visuals will match. Explore that telepathy of... thing a little yes! bit. Yes! And, and it's because, be fun. like, the, the doctor, too, um, uh, Spiner, right? Like, he also had that telepathic thing because he yes! was, like, directly connected. And I was like, this is so cute. Directly right? connected. And then all of the information that he got from the orb about being like, here's how we can, like, here's how we advance. Here's our next stage of evolution as human civilization here on Earth. Like, we have the tools now. Like, physics everything we got it black holes how do they we we're here we know this now like explore it don't just yeah. kill them off right when they find this information which is what happened <laughs> like they're in that room like we're oh my god i the fact that they killed his husband vom hard vom i mean half the shit in this movie is hard vom in general but oh my god yeah that that like was just so <sighs> it was so rude it was so it mean it was like, I don't why? even think they got to like they they had this relationship right that was like great and out there and wonderful, but they also I don't think they got to kiss. No, they didn't. They didn't get to kiss, which and was just so, like some some more. I like granted, I'm happy that they were as overt with them being a couple, like mm-hmm. with the sort of musings of like sweetie baby, um, honey, whatever. My like, butt's the, out. What, yeah, my <laughs> like ooh, covered, like hey, people see my you let them see my butt. Oh my god, like that that whole fun romantic sort of silliness and loving sort of tenderness that they had the overtness of that here for it. There's no nuance. They're a couple. They have sex. They are gay. We love this. They're in love. Yeah. But the fact that we did not get an on-screen kiss and look, if they my husband are... wakes up, if my husband wakes up after a 20 year coma, the kiss. first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to smooch his face yeah. so fucking hard and oh my uh, God. You better fucking close the door because like it's there's just so... going to be nothing but smooches happening. Yeah, it's so it's just so rude because like they are arguably the best couple. Not arguably. I think they're the best couple in this. Like from a loving, like respectful, they they like each other. It's obvious they like each other and they respect each other and they're in love. And we they have love chemistry. All of that. And they have chemistry. And respect, again, him, and respect. respect for each other. Like, yeah. he gets out of bed and he's like, I got work to do. I got to yeah. do this. Come on, baby. Here, sweetie. What are you? Oh, my God. What are you doing with that saw? Put that down. No, no, no. It's going to be fine. Don't worry about it, babe. Trust me. I got this. Yeah. 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 Like, There's trust. Um, yeah. The fact that they, like, the best couple in the movie didn't get uh, a kiss or any sort of on-screen romance apart from the dialogue is frustrating, especially with the trope of, queers can't be happy and we're going to just go ahead and kill one of the partners Mm -hmm. um bullshit and bogus and just uh negative points minus two giving it i'm giving i'm taking two points away for that two out of five right you're taking two points away no i I, I don't i don't really know what the what the numeric count like the value of a two in this scenario is i'll come to that decision later but i've decided I've decided that two is the number that I'm sticking with for now, as far as the detracted points. Um, and we'll we'll vibe out the rest later. This movie was just like, speaking of characters that we could remove, what about that little peon agent guy that was like, um, turned to Dikembe, uh, I 
think I'm saying that correctly. Oh, yeah. And when, was when like, like, you have the heart of a warrior or whatever at the okay, end. Okay, before that, so let's talk about Dikembe and how his nation is considered, quote unquote, hostile territory when it is a black nation, when the, him and his people have been fighting these aliens for 20 years, right? And good for them for being able to hold that on their own and not letting anybody else in because they were like, no, this is ours. You're not going to do this. We're going to figure out what's happening with this technology and stuff, yeah. right? So, like, love that they have their autonomy and it's still, like, 20 years later, like, they're not being, like, railroaded into what the what everybody else wants, right? So yeah. I like yeah. them having that that sort of control, right? But then... They go into, like, this this backstory with all of that, right? And, like, Dikembe is, like, one of the most badass people. And, like, oh, you got to kill him from behind. Like, fucking yes, love this. Well, but then he spends the whole time validating the white characters. Yeah. yeah um, it's, especially I mean, that peon agent that's, like, he literally turns to him and says, give me a katana and teach me what you know. Yeah. It's messy and problematic and also just in terms of, like, story makes no sense. It, it is one, like, I think that Dikembe was a victim of, you have too many characters. So who we re- who are we not going to talk about, really, Dikembe? Like, that whole subplot was so just forgotten about. On top of the introduction, like, outside of the introduction of, again, this nation state in Africa has been doing this. They've learned how to kill these aliens. They've learned their tech. They have this huge ship. There is so much information, intelligence, and strength there that once they leave that, after they're like, oh, this is where we're going to see the symbol. We find out later it's like a little orb. After that, what, where else? Where? Okay. He's only there to be on the front lines with a gun, I guess now. That's well, the like- only thing he does. They cool. have the ship, right? And they haven't learned anything about it. Like, I didn't like that they just spent that whole time fighting the aliens. Like, that to me, that didn't seem, make sense. And I wish that they would have allowed that, and like, within the narrative, allowed them to benefit from that and from that technology and have more knowledge and more from this experience but- than just the telepathy but i feel like that's like what i did not like a lot about the line the lights turned on by themselves or whatever was there was an implication when you see the ship you know that the history of these people and what's going on with these aliens there's an implication of like no they've been studying and they know they're developing tech they're learning from what they have which is this humongous ship the throwaway line where How did you get the lights to turn on? They just turned on by themselves today or whatever. Completely dismisses the fact like... It It dismisses the setup. It it erases the subtext of like why they're there, what the ship is, and who they are based on the setup. Exactly. I feel like it's just shooting itself in the foot there. I mean, Mm -hmm. already on a character that we're going to forget about anyways because this this movie doesn't give a shit about him or them in general. Mm -hmm. Um, it It was like... That line felt so out of place because, again, I was assuming that they were developing all this stuff from this tech. And that's what it's like. No, we actually have never been on the ship. The ship is just there and it just exists. But it's like, what about this whole backstory of, like, the tech and your fighting and all of this stuff? Like, you'd really set it up like, yeah, this group of people is going to be the one to teach how to end the second invasion. And they're like, oh, no, the lights just came on. We've never been inside. What? Yeah, no, we just we just got some visions. That's it. Like, yeah, I hated like, what, that. Like, what, I feel what like is... that was just erasure of that people and like that it's... literally that whole nation <laughs> and what they're capable of. They they are only capable of violence. They are hostile. Yeah. And it... they're not capable of deciphering these electronics or what they mean. What well, what did they it... learn to use? They learned to use the weapons and that's it. Because that's all the line does. The, the, all the line does is diminishes their strength and diminishes their capability. And like. When the, literally the line read like the way that the script is set up and the way that we're seeing this the way that we're being told this is here they are they're gonna lead us they know they're capable they're here boom that's why the psychologist is here that's why this doctor has been called that's why all of these other leaders who know about this are being called to Dikembe Dikembe is calling them to say like hey let's fucking talk because they're here we know what's going on we need to tell you guys what's going on and that line just completely is like wait actually no we don't know anything bye we're out of the movie now and you're like what no you're like what? wait a second <laughs> wait what happened why why in, in that case why the fuck are we here 
Mm-hmm. Like, why did we come? Why? Why is it conveyed in the movie? Why? You know what I mean? Like, I feel it's just it. It is and again, so pointless and such a disservice, and also it does not make sense. Imagine, imagine what a cool concept this would be if we in this movie decided to center the gay couple and this nation and Jasmine was still at the forefront in place of Jeff Goldblum who died like if imagine if we had that family instead like how incredible would how much of a better movie would this be from the get-go because you have so much great material to work with within those like any of those right (laughs) rather than just like I'm a fly boy who's really horny. Yeah. I feel like if we did that, though, this movie would just end up being Alien 2. Oh, Or Aliens. You know, essentially where it's like the conversation about motherhood and matriarch and and lineage and violence and, like, the struggle against patriarchy. Like, I feel like all of those themes would be very much more at the forefront of the narrative and we would just have something like Aliens. And again, love, obsessed with. But, you know what? I don't think we need better movies. (laughs) This movie doesn't need to be better. Hmm. I'm going to be brave and I'm going to say that here today. Like, we just need actually some dumb boy Nerf gun shoot 'em up movies for the boys. Oh, man. Because this movie so is for the boys. This movie is for the boys. It's for the boys. Yeah. Anyways, fuck America. Woo! Fuck it. Oh, oh! Happy Fourth of July, JK. <laughs> um, oh, man. Cool. I, I have, have nothing more to say I'm, about this movie. Yeah. I feel like that. Same. We're and we're back. back. Is it 4th of July? It was yesterday. It was yesterday. When you're listening to this. <laughs> yeah. And if you're listening to it after that, it was however many days before that that you're listening to. So I, I don't mean, know. Maybe you do the math. I mean, we've already conquered the aliens canonically at this point. So now how how fitting that we're having this uh, retrospective discussion on how we killed the aliens the day after we killed the aliens. True. Yeah. Wow. Eric. Yes. Independence Day, the 90s one. Yes. Who is it for? It is for Americans who love America. It's for true patriots. That's it. Who do you think this was for? (laughs) I think it was for dads. Ooh. I think it was for dads. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's about dads. Even the problematic men, like they're all, they get their um, either redemption arc or they get their story kind of validated. So it's for dads. That's what it is. And canonically, some dads are. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Truly. I'm a just listener. I am breaking my wrist over and over again, just back and forth. Little ding moment. Um, (laughs) Gay. Some dads are gay. Uh, And many, I wish, were winky face emoji. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, did you like it? Uh, that's a great question. Um, did I like this movie? Mm-hmm. No. You know Processing. what? Well, here's the thing. It's going to be one of those, like, if I'm thinking about it, no. But if I'm not thinking about it, yes. So that's where I'm going to lie on on that. Like, structurally, integrally, do I think it's bad? Yeah. But from a, like, fun, cool, fresh, I'm high and made some gorgeous truffle popcorn moment, then I loved it. Obsessed. (laughs) Very, very on board with this movie. Did you like it? I feel the same. I feel like overall, like, when I'm really thinking about it, not so much. Yeah. But um, turn off my brain and watch it. Yeah, I like it. I, I I, I like it when I'm, like, sitting there and I'm like, What's something that's just really silly and really, you know what this movie is. Like, if you're going to watch this on 4th of July, I mean, it has its moments that are just incredibly silly, incredibly memeable. So I like it for that. Same. Same. I agree. What about Independence Day Resurgence 2016, Eric? Yes. Was it new, interesting, or the same? Progressive or regressive? Uh And did it evolve with today's ideals? I don't think it was new or interesting. I think it had very much the same or worse. uh, Just in its given structure. 
I think it's regressive uh, outside of its surface. We're progressive um, perspective where obviously it's all performative. They're, they're like, it's the, it's the black square of uh, independence day IP. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like sort of performative shit um, and not very clearly not. So I think it was regressive. I think it was messy. I, yeah, I think in the same way that it is regressive, it does the thing where it's, look, we're inclusive and we're fun and, like, we're talking about queer stories. We're talking about people of color. We're, like, talking about women and women in power and, like... But we're not. Lo- yeah, but but we're not. Exactly. So I, 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 I think in the way that it tried to address some of the more progressive and inclusive ideals on the surface level of, like, today um, and the acceptability of anything that's not cishet white male today, it did the every story ever told thing where it immediately sweeps that under the rug as soon as it's introduced for the let's bring back that president guy and let's bring back like let's introduce this other guy who's like pointless you know it just Mm -hmm. bad no yeah that's what i think what do you think (laughs) i think that this was new in terms of In terms of we knew the aliens exist and that we had already appropriated some of their technologies and were trying to prepare for that. Because, like, the first half of the first movie is, wow, what's this? Are we at war? Are we peaceful? What's going on? You're trying to figure out what this means, right? And I think that's one of the best parts about this is just that indecision and that, like, um, uncertainty And in this one, there's none of that. So there's no mystery. There's no nothing, right? There's no, it's just like, they're here. We're going to, we're going to kill them. That's it. And they don't do a good job at that either. So I think it's, it's new in in that way, but otherwise it is basically the same movie. I think it's incredibly regressive um, because it tries to be, really performative in the way that it performative and celebratory of its uh progressive ideas you know like we talked about but in that same breath all it does is just it creates more characters and doesn't give any of them any depth or any real story um so it just ends up being more noise and the lines and the the actions and everything from those characters they don't add any value really to the narrative or to the story and it makes those characters look bad and i'm talking specifically about the female president yeah um i mean not as much with the gay couple but like i mean because i think that they were great but also you're still going to do like it was a very well established trope in 2016 the barrier gaze trope is something that has been incredibly heavily criticized and rightfully so and so literally that is the one thing that you're going to do out of all of the main characters to kill that's the one that you're going to kill right so just incredibly performative and trying to be progressive but not really knowing what to do or how to do that or like doing the work or just even having like smart writing around those characters because they could have just had like one or two lines but instead all of the like one or two autonomous lines or lines about them and their motivation rather than having their lines be having their lines support the main character, the main white characters and framing the audience's perception about those white characters rather yeah. than their own position in the world and their own autonomy. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Regressive as hell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who was it for? Patriots. It's for patriots. It's for real Americans. It's for true patriots. It's for my cues out there. Hey, queens. Um, no, I'm just kidding. It's for them. <laughs> I don't know. Who do you think it was for? I'm going to say it's for dads and dads for okay. dads in training or like oh. hopeful dads, right? Okay. Because like before it was like established men, right? In, yeah. their, in their career and their relationships with their, like their respective women and love interest and everything right yeah. and in this one we still had those same characters because apparently we still have to explore them and maybe not their relationships but their relationships with their sons or daughters because we are still we're relating to this new cast of characters based on their familial relationships right um yeah and to their father not to their mother 
right? It's ex-president Whitman's daughter, not, you know, um, I see, I don't even remember the, the woman president's <laughs> name, but, yeah. um, but you know what I mean? And so then the younger generation is still kind of, um, they're all hopeful dads. They're talking about buying a house or getting a woman and settling down or any of that. And so in that way, it is for the older generation of, you know, American patriot dads and the newer upcoming generation of American dads. When I get back, I'll go look at that house. Oh, the one on this street? Yeah, if it's still there. <laughs> oh, my God. Just shut the f- like, shut the fuck up. I'm so tired of this stupid fucking movie. Okay, great. Yes, 100%. Could not agree with you more. Did you also, like it? Oh, oh no, I was just going to do that the same joke that I did before where I'm like, to all the dads and dads in training out there, big winky face. Um, <laughs> did you like it? Did I like it? No. Uh, I kind of liked it coming into this, but the more we talked about it, the, I despise this movie. I think it's bad. I thought this movie was trash. Did you like it? No, 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 no. <laughs> I do not like this movie. I wish that it never existed. Um, yeah. I do really love the gay couple, but other than that, this is a hard pass for me. Hard pass. Yeah. Hard pass. To me, it was just kind of an insult to watch. I feel that completely. Yeah, I, I got nothing. <laughs> proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. Oh and Lord. I won't forget the man who died. Okay. That. Anyways. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, we really appreciate it, and we love you oh so much. Uh, please rate and review us if you haven't already, and follow us on social media. And go check out our Patreon for as little as $3 a month. You get access to our entirely separate show that's also kind of a companion show called the Not Nostalgia Podcast, where we talk, just talk about whatever we want for the week. Usually it's something that's tied into the episode um, or that week's episode, but it's a little bit more loose. It's a little bit more fun. I mean, we're already really fun, so $3 is probably worth that a little extra bump. <laughs> um, yeah, so go check it out. We also have a bunch of other goodies on there. That's patreon.com forward slash nostalgia. Um, you'll love it. You'll love it. Our artwork and music is by Eric Lefebvre. Editing Ooh. is by Danny Barkley. And thank you again for listening. And thank you, Eric. Thank you, Jess. <laughs> and remember, stay cute. And stay critical. Bye. I'm proud to be an American. Oh, I at least I And I proudly stand up. <laughs> Next to you. This podcast has been brought to you by the Nostalgia Network. Visit the NostalgiaNetwork.com for more. Hey, everybody. I'm Eric. I'm Shelby. I'm Jake. And we are the band Lousy Advice from the Lousy Advice Podcast. Come listen as we draft artists and genre-centric best-of lists. With the help of our closest friends. These lists are canon. And there's not a goddamn thing you can do about it. From Misfits to Cher. Green Day to Gaga. Or Pup to Paramore. Listen to the Lousy Advice Podcast now or else. Stream us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, The Nostalgia Network, or wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget that we are the band Lousy Advice, and this is our podcast, The Lousy Advice Podcast. The Lousy Advice Podcast? The Lousy Advice Podcast. Podcast. Podcast.